Good morning, once again. I want you all to make sure you keep those palms out. And when you see me waving, just throw your palms in the air and wave them like you really care. Okay. Uh, wow. Y'all see how big Youth Connect is? Wave your palms in the air. Oh, amazing. Okay, you guys have nicely distracted me. <laughs> Today, our sermonic theme is parades, palms, and praise. I know your bulletin says parades and praise. I thought, well, we have palms, and it just felt like a PPP kind of day. So, parades, palms, and praise. Parades, palms, and praise. This past Thanksgiving, our family watched the Macy's Parade. The Macy's Parade is the annual parade in New York City presented by the chain store, Macy's. <laughs> this parade started in 1924, and it's the second oldest Thanksgiving parade tying with the Detroit Parade to the oldest parade by four years going to Philadelphia. I knew it was on the tip of your tongue. The Macy's Parade is a three-hour parade that has been broadcasted by NBC ever since 1953. I remember first watching this parade in my own family as a child. And so this year I thought, oh, this might be a nice tradition to pass down. And so I got up on time and cut the TV on. And this parade went on and on and on. It goes for three hours. I was cutting up vegetables, parade still going. Cooking breakfast, the parade is still going. There are all sorts of parades in our country. Most recently here in Chicago, we had the St. Patrick Parade where the river is turned green. And then there is Mardi Gras to kick off the Lent season we find ourselves in now, closer and closer to Good Friday and Easter. And there's the Rose Bowl and 4th of July and a parade right down our street, 53rd Street in front of our church where we have often passed out water from time to time and shared a meal. There are all sorts of parades and parades usually always back in time were three things that consistently are a part of parades. that celebration, pride, recognition, and fun. Parades are there to celebrate. They're there to lift up our pride, to recognize people, and parades are to have fun. We may even start a new tradition at our church this year by marching possibly in the Pride Parade. This is where we enter the biblical text today. There is a parade involving a cult, Jesus, and Jesus worshipers. The cult is recruited for transportation, and Jesus is the guy. But it is the multitude of disciples that gets this parade going. And Jesus is riding on the colt covered in clothes. They begin to throw down clothes in the street and they praise him. Can you all wave those palms? I know not all of you got your cardio workout this week. There's a praise going on. And remember, parades are about what? They're about celebration and pride and recognition and fun. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on, King Jesus. No man, no woman, no human or Pharisee or Hennessy or situation or oppression will uh, hinder thee. This is your day. Wave those palms in the air. The parade was big, but some scholars say it was not big enough. Even in Jesus' time, they knew how to acknowledge dignitaries. And some scholars said this parade fell short. It was a parade for sure, but it wasn't all that. It was some noise, all right, but it could have been louder. It could have been bigger. It could have been better. They were praising their God, but nah, nah, nah. For all that it wasn't, this is what it was. As Jesus was riding on a colt, those that were there began to praise Jesus. Every parade has a purpose, and this purpose was all about Jesus. Can somebody wave your palms in the air? Wave them like you really care. And if you're ready for the King of Kings, somebody say, oh yeah. 
There will always be someone present to say what something wasn't, what something isn't, how it didn't cut the mustard or add up. But let me tell you what it was. The people got loud. And when others started to complain, Jesus said, look, if you don't let them get this out their system, the rocks will cry out. You see, this parade was like many parades. They were getting excited about the subject King Jesus. Most of you all know because I talk about it, but my team last year went all the way to the championship. They're called the Chicago Sky. They're a WNBA team. They got off to a rough start. Many of you have teams that you're loyal to, not just one you root for when they get to the end and you know they're at the championship. You have a team that you're there for them in the good times and you're there for them in the bad times. And while my team, they had lost as many games as they had won. We barely made it to the runoffs, but well, they started playing like they wanted to win. And the Chicago Star rose from the ashes, and that final game still gives me goosebumps to this day. It was down to the last five minutes, and the other team was 15 points ahead, and the stadium was full, and the stadium was quiet, and we weren't doing any shouting. We were scared. And then there was a three-point shot, and then another, and the stadium began to erupt. And it's what fans wait for years, and there was a parade. You see, because parades are for celebration. Parades are for recognition. Parades are for pride. Parades are for fun. I know we do things more quietly here. But every now and then, something happens, and it's worth getting a little bit loud. You cannot contain your excitement. You cannot contain your joy. You cannot contain how ecstatic you are. You cannot contain how good the Lord has been to you. You cannot contain how the Lord worked it out. You cannot contain that on this journey, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, you cannot contain the joy that you have found. You cannot contain your gratitude for the things that the Lord has done for you. A colleague of mine found out that there was a tumor growing inside of her. You know, tumors scare folks, don't they? When you hear that there's a tumor inside you, it scares you. The tumor was biopsied and the results will come back the following week. And you know what my friend decided to do? She said, I want my friends to meet me at the beach. I want to get together with my loved ones. I want to reflect on what you mean to me, but I want to reflect on what I mean to you. And there was food, and there was laughter, and they gathered to share with each other what we often say for funerals, what we loved about her. We carved out a space before the news, whatever the news was going to be, to express our appreciation and our pride for her. You know, we live in a toxic world that thrives off of meanness, that thrives off of hate, that thrives off of division. We thrive off of gossip and other people's bad fortune. We have magazines that have been in business for years that sell out copies based on other people's pain. When we see a fight, we gravitate. We come to it not to stop it, but to watch it. And so as followers of Christ, it behooves us to find the words that lift people up, find the prayers that set people free. Shout out the praises so the rocks don't have to cry out how much Jesus means to us. Our gratitude, Lord, when no one else could go into the surgery room, you were there. You hit the like button daily because you want a relationship with each of us. You are Alpha and Omega. You were there in the beginning, and I know you'll be there in the end. You've been there. You know my name, my first, my middle, and my last. You know my married name and my divorce name. <laughs> Wave those palms. 
And let's give Jesus some praise today. Let's raise those palms and wave them like you care. Somebody say, oh yeah. You see the multitude, they were getting loud and excited because their praise was connected to their relationship. They knew why they were celebrating. They knew why they were recognizing. They knew why they were taking pride. They knew why they were having fun. Jesus knew what was coming, but in that moment, the parade of praise was connected. It was connected to their gratitude. And gratitude is not about what's out there. It's about what happens deep, spiritually, inside of us that we never forget. Maya Angelou said, people will not remember what you said. They will not remember what you did, but they will remember how you made them feel, how you make people feel. That's, that's gratitude, that I cannot let the rocks cry out because Jesus has been too good to me. I can hear Mary from last Sunday say, you weren't there when Jesus found me. You weren't there when Jesus put Jesus' loving arms all around me. You don't know the cost of my alabaster box. This is a two-way relationship. I can hear the woman at the well say, meet a man that told me everything I ever did. He looked inside of me and he didn't even judge me. You were not there. I can hear the woman with the issue of blood saying, all I did was touch his clothes. Years of doctors and isolations and stares and judgment. You weren't there. You don't see the nights when I cried myself to sleep. I can hear a struggling soul say, I once was confused and had no peace, but now my mind is clear and my feet are free. Every parade has a purpose. St. Patrick, Thanksgiving, every parade has a purpose. But this parade was about the deep abiding sense of gratitude. This week, my first cousin died and I'm still sort of walking in a sense of shock. You know, like as you get older, that line between the living and the dead and the transition is an interesting kind of journey. Her life was painful for sure, but her, her death caused me to go deep and not only to see the pain, but when and where our lives intersected and what she gave to me. She was smart and she was always trying different things. And as my older cousin, I would just follow her and I would try those new things. And I'm grateful for that. You see, gratitude is beyond the surface. Gratitude is down in the basement of our lives. You know, sometimes when you go to the hospital, you have to take the elevator down to get to the basement. Gratitude, it takes us back and it's deep and it reminds us of how blessed we are to have been on this journey of encounters all along the way. At this pivotal moment, we felt God so powerfully in our lives. This is how Jesus was with them. But this is how Jesus is with us. Your memory ought to be filled with, you've seen the Lord answer prayers. You've seen the Lord heal. You've seen the Lord make a way. You've seen the Lord open doors. It's personal, this journey. The Lord has brought us on this journey. And the Lord didn't bring us this far to leave us. And each time we remember, it's like reheating gumbo. The seasoning goes deeper. The taste is richer. Wave your palms in the air. Take me back. This abiding sense that I must praise the Lord. Because if I don't praise the Lord, the rocks will cry out. They were convicted and compelled to attend this parade and to praise the Lord because their praise was connected to their relationship with the Lord. It's personal. Their praise, says the text, is for everything, everything that they witness Jesus do. Billy reminded us a few Sundays ago, and I listen to folks in this congregation, he reminded us about the 10 folks with leprosy, and he admonished us to say thank you. 
He said, you remember that story where Jesus healed 10 people with leprosy and only one came back to say thank you. That means the other nine continued on their way. It's time for us united. It's time for us to come back. And remember, we didn't get here by ourselves and we will not face tomorrow by ourselves. And we need to wave those palms in the air with gratitude. Thank you, Lord. Remember, thank you, Lord. Blessed the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the heights. Parades are for celebration, for recognition, for pride, and for fun. We celebrate you, O oh Lord, today. We recognize you, O oh Lord, today. We have pride in you, O oh Lord, today. Thank you for coming to earth, dear Lord, to give us hope and another chance. We are grateful. There's a parade happening, and Jesus is along for the ride saying nothing. And today, Jesus is the centerpiece of this parade. And his followers are connecting with praise, with their deep gratitude. And the noise gets louder and louder, and somebody says, shh. And Jesus says, no, don't shush them. Because if they get quiet, the rocks have to cry out. As he cascades on a donkey, this moment should be savored. It doesn't take everyone, but only those who are willing to listen, willing to move, and willing to speak up. Whether on the beach, or on a hill, or on a dirt road, our parades are connected to our deep abiding gratitude for the deep spaces that Jesus has been with us on this journey. Parades, palms, and praises. Amen.